Hello all, welcome to this video on Networking Lab. Today I'll be talking about the basics of socket programming in C. We also show the implementation of the same using TCP and UDP. Let's begin with the topic, socket. Now a socket is one endpoint of a two-way communication link between two programs running on the network. The socket provides bidirectional FIFO communication facility over the network. A socket connecting to the network is created at each end of the communication. Each socket has a specific address. This address is composed of an IP address and a port number. Sockets are generally employed in client server applications. The servers create a socket, attaches it to a network port address and then waits for the client to contact it. The client creates a socket and then attempts to connect to the server socket. When the connection is established, then the transfer of data takes place. There are different types of sockets available like datagram socket, stream socket and row sockets. Now datagram socket and stream sockets they vary in the transport layer protocol that they use. Datagram sockets use UDP and stream sockets use TCP. TCP is a connection oriented protocol which is reliable and bidirectional, whereas UDP is a connectionless protocol which has no acknowledgements, no retransmission, where packets might arrive out of order and duplicates are possible. Then we have the third type of socket which is raw sockets. They allow direct sending and receiving of IP packets without any protocol specific transport layer formatting. They are used in security related applications like Nmap which is a network scanner that is used to discover hosts and services on a computer network by sending packets and analyzing their responses. It is also used in Routing protocols like IGMP, which is Internet Group Management Protocol, and in ICMP, which is Internet Control Message Protocol, that is used in the ping utility. The sockets that we are creating here are called the Berkeley sockets, so we'll be using the Berkeley socket API for the same. This picture shows how two hosts are communicating with each other through the sockets. Now each socket will have its IP address and a port number which is connected to each other through a router. Now we look into detail into the various socket functions that we'll be using here. The diagram here shows the different functions that are used both in TCP and UDP both at the server and the client side. In TCP, both server and client use the functions socket, send, receive and close. Now the functions bind, listen and accept are for server in TCP and for client there is a function called connect. As in the case of UDP, the server and the client have functions socket, bind, send to, receive from and Close. Now we'll start by discussing about the function which is socket. Also note that all the functions that we will be discussing from now are defined in the header file which is syssocket.h. Now looking into the function int soc id socket, int domain, int type and int protocol. Now this function socket will create an endpoint for communication and returns a file descriptor that refers to that endpoint. Now this file descriptor returned by a successful call will be the lowest numbered file descriptor that is not currently open for any process. Now we look into the domain, that's the first argument. 
so domain will specify the communication domain so in this case you can have different options I have shown two options here one is AFINET which is used for IPv4 internet protocol and AF Unix which is used for local communication then the second argument is type which is used to refer to communication semantics that too we are using the two commonly used options which is SOC stream that is used for TCP connections which is sequenced reliable and two-way connection based then we have SOC DGRAM which is used in UDP which supports datagrams then the third option is protocol now the protocol will specify the particular protocol that is to be used with the socket normally only a single protocol exists to support a particular socket type within a given protocol family in which case the protocol field can be specified as zero now the status here is referring to the return value of this function now if it is successful then a value which is returned will be the lowest file descriptor number as we have seen and if this value goes below 0 that's, that is if it is minus 1 it means that there was an error in it. Now we look into the next function which is bind. Now here bind has three arguments which are the socket descriptor followed by a pointer to the socket header in structure and the length of that particular structure. Now this bind will assign the address specified by the second argument here to the socket referred to in the first argument. And we can also see this will store the status of return value. And if it is minus 1, it means there was a failure. Else, it will always return the value of 0. Then we'll move on to the next function, which is listen. Now, the listen function has two arguments, which is SOC FD and backlog. Now listen marks the socket referred to by SOC FD as a passive socket that is as a socket that will be used to accept the incoming connection request. And the second argument backlog defines the maximum length to which the queue of pending connections can grow. Now on successful execution of this function it will return a 0 else it will return minus 1. Now we look into the next function. So here, first the client will be sending a connect request to the server. Then it will execute the accept function. First we'll see the connect function. So looking into connect function, we have three arguments here. The uh, file descriptor, then the pointer to the address structure and its length. Now, the connect function shall attempt to make a connection to the particular socket. Now, if the connection was successful, then it will return a 0, else it will return a minus 1. Next, we look into the function accept, which is run at the server end. So, this is done when a request is received from the client it has the arguments the file descriptor then a pointer to the socket in structure and its length now this will extract the first connection request on the queue of pending connections for the listening socket and create a new connected socket and return the new file descriptor referring to that socket 
Now that is the value that is stored in this variable s. Next, we look into the functions that are used for sending and receiving data at TCP and UDP side. First, we'll move to the send function that is used by TCP. Now, send will have the arguments, the file descriptor, the buffer where the data to be sent is stored, the length of the data and flags. Now, this flags can be the OR of zero or more flags, like there are some options for available for it. So, we will see two of them. One of them is message more, which is used to say that the caller has more data to send. And the other one is message EOR, which is used for terminating a record. Now, the return value here, it is called count which will contain the number of bytes that is sent. If there is an error, it will return a minus one value. Now we'll see send to that is used in datagram sockets, which is UDP. Here also we have the socket descriptor, buffer, buffer size, flags if any. And then we have the destination address pointer and the length of the destination address. So those two will be the extra fields that we added when you use send to. Then we have the receive function. Here also we'll have a file descriptor, then the buffer, length of the bu buffer and flags used. So here also we are uh, discussing two flags that are used in receive. Now which are message OOB that is used to indicate receiving out of band data and then we have message peak which causes the receive operation to return data from the beginning of the receive queue without removing that data from the queue. Here also we have a count variable where the number of bytes received will be stored else that is if there is an error the value will be minus one. In case of datagram socket, it is received from, so there will be two extra fields where we have the source address and source address length. All the rest will be the same for both. Now we are going to discuss the functions and the structures that we'll be using in the implementation of the program that we are going to see shortly. So, first of all, we'll be using a structure called SOC header in where we'll be using the peer address that is used to store the peer address. So, it is declared in the header file that net inet slash in dot h. So, this is its format. It has three members in it. The sin family member is referring to the address family, which is in our case af inet. Then we have sin underscore port, which is used to store the port in network byte order. Then we have the third element, which is a structure that is used to store the internet address. Now the third structure, which is in header, contains the element s header. So that is where the address in network byte order will be stored. Now we'll look into what this network byte order is. Now the ports and addresses are always specified in calls to the socket functions using the network byte order convention. This convention is a method of sorting bytes that is independent of specific machine architecture. Now host byte order on the other hand sorts bytes in the manner which is most natural to the host software and hardware. There are two common host byte methods that are used. One is little endian and the other is big endian. Little endian byte ordering places the least significant byte first followed by the next higher ones. And big endian byte ordering places the most significant byte first followed by the less higher ones after that. 
the network byte order is defined always to be big endian. Next, we'll be using a function called h tones, which is defined either in arpa slash inet.h or net inet slash in.h. Now, this depends on different systems. So, in the program we are going to discuss, I'll be including both the header files. Now, we'll be looking what h tones is used for. It is used to translate an unsigned short integer into its network byte order. Then we will be using the function inet adder which is defined in the header file arpa slash inet dot h. Now in adder is a function that will convert the string which is pointed to by cp variable in the standard IPv4 dotted decimal notation to an integer value that is suitable for use as an internet address. So in our case this address will be 127.0.0.1 which is the local host or loopback address. Then we will be also using a structure socketer storage which is defined in sys slash socket.h. Now this structure is large enough to accommodate all supported protocol specific address structures. Then we use a type called socklen underscore t. Now this is an integer type of width of at least 32 bits. Then we use the close function which is defined in unistd.h that is used to deallocate the file descriptor and if it is successfully executed then 0 shall be returned else it is minus 1. Then we have string copy and get s of string.h header file. String copy is used to copy the value of string from source to destination. Get s is used to get the value from standard input which is the keyboard. We will be also using the function exit which is defined in stdlib.h. Now it is used to show the exit status. So in our case we are using it to show the abnormal termination. So I will be using exit and the status value as 1. Now we will look into the implementation. First we will be going through the TCP server program. I have included all the header files that are to be used. Then I will define a file descriptor server to which the return value of socket function is stored. Since it's TCP and IPv4, I am including AFINet, SOC stream, and since IP protocol is used, I'll include 0. Then I'll declare a variable for SOC adder in structure, which is server adder, and I'll initialize the three values, which is family, AFINet, and port number. I'll convert this port into the required format using the function htones. Then the third member, which is a structure, I'll take the local host address and convert it using inet adder to the internet address and store it there. Then I'll be binding it. That is done by including the file descriptor and a pointer to the SOC adder structure that we created just now and its size. Then after binding, the server enters into listening mode. So listen of the file descriptor comma the backlog length which in my case is 5. Now if this is successful, we'll print the message that it's listening else we'll print that there is an error. Now after listening, the request is received from the client and the server will be accepting it. So accept will contain the file descriptor and the pointer to the structure and its length. Now this will be the new file descriptor through which data will be transferred. Now since it's the server, it is waiting to receive a message from the client. So since it's TCP, I'll use the receive function, the file descriptor, buffer. Buffer size is 
given as 1024. That is taken with the assumption that the data transfer size will be 1 KB. Now I am giving the full size of buffer since I am unaware of the size of data from the client and 0 because there are no flags used. Then I am printing the data I received that is stored in buffer. Then I will copy the data I need to send to the client to buffer using string copy. Then I will print a message showing that I am sending data to client. Then I will send it using the send function with the file descriptor buffer and the size of the string that I stored in buffer and 0 because there are no flags. After all this communication is over, I will close both the listening socket and the socket used for data transfer. Now looking into the TCP client, we will use uh, the same steps where I have the client file descriptor and the socket are in structure which are initialized with these values. Now next step is to send a connection request to the server. So I will include the file descriptor pointer to the structure and the size of the structure. Then I will print that I am sending a message to the server. Then I will take this string, copy it to buffer and send it to the server mentioning the file descriptor, buffer, size of the string and 0 because there are no flags. Now the client is waiting for a message from the server. For that you will be using the receive function. You have the file descriptor, buffer, full size of buffer because I don't know the size of data that is coming from the server side and 0 because no flags are used. Then I will print the receive data and finally close the socket. Next, we will see the implementation for UDP server and client. We will begin with UDP server. I have included all the header files. Here I will have two variables for socket or in structure and two message variables too. Then I will store the client address size to a variable. Now this is optional. We can either give this directly in the function also. Here I am creating a UDP socket. So IPv4, we have find it soft dgram because it's UDP. And this option here is similar to the zero we saw before. So if it, you are using IP protocol, you can either give it as zero or you can give it specifically like this. Since it's UDP, I gave it as IP proto underscore UDP. If it's TCP, you can give the option IP proto underscore TCP. Now I'm checking if this server value is less than zero. It means there is an error and I'll give an abnormal termination. Otherwise, what I'll do is I'll print the message socket was created successfully. Then I will initialize these members of this structure as we did before. So I'll be using a different port number here. Then I will do the binding, taking the file descriptor, pointer to the structure and its size. Now if this is less than 0, then the binding has not happened and there is an abnormal termination. Otherwise, the binding is done. Then the server enters into a listening mode. Then the server is waiting for a message from the client. So it is received from function, the file descriptor, variable where the data received will be stored, size of it, no flags, so it's 0. Then the address of the source and its length. Now if this is less than 0, again there was some error, abnormal termination. Else what it does is it will print the message received. And you can copy it to another variable using string copy. Then I need to send a message to the client. So I'll use the send to function. I'll mention the file descriptor, the message variable its length, no flags, so it's 0, then the address of the sender and size of the address. Now if it is less than 0, then there is an error, abnormal termination, else the message will be printed at the other side. And finally, I'll close the socket. Now looking at the client side, the same thing is done. Creating the file descriptor, checking if it's less than 0, if it is less, then it's terminated. Otherwise, successfully created, initializing the structure variables. Then 
asking the client to enter a message that is to be sent to the server and reading it through the get us function. Then we'll have the send to function to send the message to the UDP server. File descriptor, message variable, size, flag, then the destination address, its length. If less than zero, then abnormal termination. Else, it will be waiting for receiving a message from the server side. Same thing as server. Then if there is an error, it is printed. Else, the socket is closed. Now we'll be looking into the TCP implementation. Now we have the programs for TCP server, which we discussed before. Then we have the program for TCP client. Since we are running both on the same system, we need two terminals. So I'll be running it at the same time, one for server and one for client. I'll compile the server program. Then I'll run it first, so it will be in the listening mode. Then I'll compile the client program and run it. So it will send the message. Now here we have the message already set in the program as we have discussed. Now we look into the same for UDP implementation. Here also we'll have two terminals. First of all, we'll run the server program. We'll first compile it and run it. So it will be waiting for the client message. Then we'll do the same for the client, compile it and run it. There is a warning, I am ignoring it for the time being. Now after running the program, it is asking me to enter a message to be sent to server. I am sending the message hi, so that is print at the server side also. That's all for now. Thank you for watching.